Drama City Productions presets. You are plugged in for the Podcast Wrestling Society, where you can get dynamic weekly pro wrestling and MMA related content. Give us a follow on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at P-O-D-W-R-E-S Society so that you can stay in the know. Face is the place and the sky is the limit. And if you like what you hear, give us a five-star review and hit that subscribe button. Woo! 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 Now, your host, he is the one and only Troy Adams. It's the Podcast Wrestling Society. Listen, if you dare. I am your loving leader, benevolent host, Midwest Monster, and the official Paul Bearer for this summertime affair. I am Troy Adams. And with me today, if you get past him, you'll have to deal with my undertaker. He is the mankind to my Uncle Paul in this funeral procession. He is Greg. What up, Greg? What up? What up? I gotta be the weird one again. Oh, yeah, because Paul Bearer, God rest his soul, was totally normal. <laughs> all right. All right. Uh, Come on, man. You're like... <laughs> all right, well, given the fact that you and Ramon will be out of town for SummerSlam week, and I will also be out of town the week, well, right after SummerSlam, we are pre-recording some stuff here, putting it... Uh, we are... Uh, not going to do, like, current events, but we are doing some SummerSlam-themed things, if you catch my drift. This right here will be our SummerSlam watch-along episode, and it is not just SummerSlam. It's terrible matches of the dead man at SummerSlam. It's an Undertaker SummerSlam double feature. Yay! Yay! Well, you know what that means, Greg. It means, uh... That everybody needs to fire up whatever uh, device they use. Pull up the WWE Network if you want to watch along. We are traveling back to the year 1993. Why did the WWE hate The Undertaker around the August time frame? Because. It's just stupid. I guess. Well, 1993, August 30th, ladies and gentlemen... We are at the time marker, one hour, 39 minutes exactly, to watch The Undertaker versus Giant Gonzalez 2. Because if it wasn't bad enough watching it happen once it's at uh, WrestleMania 9, we get it again at SummerSlam. Man. Yeah. Why not? Who did Mark That's Calloway so piss one. off? Again. Yeah, who, who the hell did Calloway piss off? I don't know. He- he didn't want to do the job. <laughs> he didn't want to J-O-C do the J-O-B, brother. Or that doesn't work for me, brother. <laughs> All right. Well, anyway, you ready, Greg? Uh, I think. <laughs> no, I mean, but... I've seen this match before, so, yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> Nothing will ever prepare you. I well, like I said, <laughs> one hour, 39 minutes exactly. I hope you all got your uh, machines fired up on the WWE Network. And we're going to go in, uh, I'll count it down from three to go. Three, two, one, go. All right. It is the sixth annual Summer's Spectacular featuring Lex Luger, Yokozuna, Bret Hart, Undertaker, and more, according to uh, the description. Man, and how, oh, going right in, Adam. All right, this is already a better start than the WrestleMania 9 match. I cannot disagree there. He's choking him. Choking the life out of him. Listen to this capacity crowd. That's what we want to do ourselves during that match at WrestleMania 9. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. Oh, we got a Harvey Whippleman sighting. Shout out to Bill Alfonso. Wow. the ref. Twice in a row. That's really sad. By the way, why is Harvey Whippleman wearing, like, an all-purple suit here? <laughs> like, Because it's SummerSlam, man. It's special. He looks like he just came back from a Prince concert. And here we go. 
let's uh, let's point out that Jenny Gonzalez just has sprayed on hair this time. It's no longer like actual fur. Oh well, like that makes yeah. like that makes it any better. But no. <laughs> oh man, he got a clothesline to the front and he leans forward. My gosh, Come just on, the, Daddy. the masterful selling right here. It's weird without I see Bill Alfonso without the whistle, by the way. So. Yeah, I know I was gonna say when it he needs to he needs to whistle this one dead now. <laughs> Bill Alfonso. You know what, dude, if you watch the side by side of the last one, it's already ten times better as hell. I yeah. know it's not saying much, but you know, it's more action at least. It goes from zero stars to a half a star. Man, we're we're going outside of the ring. Oh, man, it's about to get real. And he's doing his Zeus action. The Zeus clubbing. Why is SummerSlam the event for tall, immobile guys who can't wrestle? I don't know. That's weird he said, though. It just makes all the sense in the world. Yeah. Because, you know, when you think of summer, you think of tall, immobile guys. Come on. I guess. Man, Undertaker. Dude, watch that cameraman. Yeah, get out of here, Fink. What do you know? <laughs> By the way, did you know? Like, I noticed when uh, they when they show Howard Finkel in the ring. Oh, he's got a chair. He's got a chair. Oh, oh dude, he hit him with a folding side, dude. Look. Dang. Ooh, that probably hurt. Yeah. Uh, bring, call for the bell, daddy. No, this is a uh, a rest in peace match. Yeah. No DQ. Yeah, rest in peace match, which means, uh, um, I don't know. Oh, see that awesome Ico Pro sign well, in man, the back. Rest in peace to the audience because they're gonna die watching this match. Oh man, rest in peace to have me have uh, to me having a warm seat uh, because I'm hell getting that. So like he know. sat on the stairs, got drunk, and fell off them. <laughs> <laughs> Had to be drunk to be in this match, I guess. It's that dead man selling. <laughs> the hell, Undertaker doing his best to drag I this mean... piece of crap through a match. <laughs> He's trying to hype up the crowd, and they could care less. They go more mild than an Apollo Crews entrance. Oh, my crowd. gosh. And the front row is just sitting on their hands. <laughs> I get that this, uh, this paper is, like, patriotic and stuff. But, like, every yeah. time I see those things, I, I swear I think they're the French flag. Wow. <laughs> By the way. Here's the color scheme of them. Look, it just looks like the French flag for me, you know? Yeah, a little bit, yeah. Uh, man, I can't remember. I, I had something I was gonna at some point I was gonna make. Freaking Harvey Whippleman there holding on to holding on to the urn. For some reason, Harvey. Oh, I remember. What I was gonna say, yeah, you know, they killed that alliance angle, or not the alliance. The uh, well, technically the invasion angle. They killed that dead within a couple of months. They were like, you know what, it's not working. Send it off. But they kept this program going all the way through the summer. <laughs> And why wouldn't they, man? It's El Higante and Mean Mark. <laughs> Shut up. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> man, look how Just young saying. Bruno looked. <laughs> Little Bruno. Man, oh, back in the middle of the corner. I just want you to know, we're not having dead hair time. This is really nothing to say. This match is just, Wow. This is the greatest night in the history of our great sport. If you, <laughs> if you notice, like, Gonzalez, like, walks around putting his arms up, like, five times the match, five times in the match, trying to get the crowd hyped. Yeah, this is very much a, a Zeus performance. I'm, I'm, like, I'm not even joking. Like, he's, he's Zeus in it right now. I wonder if he watched tape of Zeus to prepare for this match. Oh, who's coming out? Oh, man. Oh, it's Paul Bearer. And he's got that wreath that Jim Cornette once sent to Jim Hurd. But we don't know because they cut away. <laughs> right? Yeah. They don't, let's not zoom in on it. Let's just, you know, let the the audience at home assume. There it is. That's the Jim Hurd wreath. <laughs> For those of you that don't know, Jim Cornette at one point sent Jim Hurd a wreath that said uh, there was a black wreath and it said, "Congratulations on the death of your company." <laughs> <laughs> Wait, who did he send it to? Jim Hurd. Oh yeah, well, how do you not kill Pizza Hut too? Yeah. Oh, he was a six. He would, see, he was successful running Pizza Hut. He can run WCW, of course. Uh oh, Bruno's getting. 
Yeah, oh, uh, rip those go hand in hand. Well, yeah, man. Holy My hell! God, dude, he weighs like hundred pounds. He just beat that. <laughs> I was gonna say I <laughs> look like I could beat the hell out of Harry Whippleman. <laughs> For those of you that don't know, I'm not a large man. And there's oh, Paul Bear. He's the biggest horse swoggle, and that's legit. Anyways, go on. Paul Bear's got Paul Bear's got his arm back, and he's 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 acting like he just got his uh his USB stick with all of his porn back. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> Well, do you see the faces he was making? Holy oh, crap! That was, what a body slam! That was the ugliest what? body slam ever. What a what a slam! That's the sweaty giant slam. <laughs> my God! Look at and Bear's like, no, not my porn! You can't have it. All right, dude, it's getting weird. He's like, maybe, maybe I should hold it up. I'm holding it up, Undertaker. Is it? Is that guy in the front row purposely trying to look like the Brooklyn Brawler? Or? <laughs> Who wouldn't want to look like the Brooklyn Brawler? And he's up. He is up. Listen to the capacity like crowd. Royce and uh, Billy Kay, Brooklyn Brawler is iconic. Mother of God. What a close Ooh, line. Pro, a Rico Pro banner. Hell yeah. Yeah, we've seen it multiple times. That's a, that's a, well, you know, everybody remembers the iconic Ico Pro. I still own some. This is like, this is <laughs> this is like a giant Gonzalez staple, dude. Right here. Yep. Uh, get hit a million times, never fall. Oh, Mother of God. Falling. What are you talking about? He's just like stumbling around. Oh, oh, he's down to one knee, and the Undertaker is going to the top rope for reasons. And what's he gonna do? Giant uh, Gonzalez looks drunk and the flying clothesline. <laughs> yeah, that's really gonna finish the two, match. Three, that's it. He yeah. beat him twice with clotheslines. <laughs> to the clothesline of doom. <laughs> a clo you want to talk about a clothesline from hell? Yeah, this match is pretty hellacious to watch. And he has the wreath. He Why has the match? wreath. Why not? El Gigante. The only thing he's missing is his midgets. And he's got the urn back. Those of you who, do, who wow. don't understand that uh, that reference, for some reason in WCW, Giant Gonzalez, one, then known as El Gigante, once came out with a trope of midgets for... Reasons. I don't know. I'm Paul Bearer and you're not. Oh, oh look at that sweet freaking mullet. Front row. Oh, yeah. <laughs> gotta get it in. I feel like every time I watch a 90s match or something, we gotta mention the mullet. Hell oh, my yeah. God. That was in hardcore. You see the bowl cuts in the front row? Man. Hey, 90s flavor. Yeah, spoiler, we're about to see something like uh, an iconic moment right here, dude. This is this was the real turning point. Looks like Eli Gonzalez right here. This is the thing right here or El Gigante, whatever you want to call him. Looks like Giant Gonzalez is about to discipline his small child. <laughs> uh, Whippleman's walking. Oh, he knocked over the wreath. How dare you, Whippleman? The wreath is down. You is son of a up. Man, that wreath took a better bump than G Gonzalez did. Yeah, talking about, talking about, speaking about mullets, man. Look at that mullet on Gonzalez, though, man. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh my gosh. He got Leon him up. Choke slam. <laughs> he got him. Freaking Whippleman could have choke slammed himself better. Mother of God. <sighs> that, that was like. And the glasses remain on, folks. The glasses are still on his face. <laughs> exactly. And that wreath <laughs> is in multiple pieces. There you go, Harvey. What did Harvey Whippleman do wrong? <laughs> You're gigantic. He probably, missing, he probably looked at a missing man or sneezed in front of him or said ACDC sucks, something. What the hell? <laughs> Freaking. Dude, if you had anybody to blame, it's yourself. You're gigantic and you couldn't beat. Uh, you, you, couldn't, you couldn't beat The Undertaker. And there's the man. 
and Yokozuna. <laughs> oh, we're freak- ahead of ourselves, but uh, that's Undertaker's next feed right there. It's freaking Jim Cornette, man, he's really what the heck? He looks like he's ready for Valentine's Day. Wearing a pink tie, a pink jacket, red pants, and a red shirt. Yeah, man, but he tops it off with that epic neck brace. Well, yeah, he's Joel Gertnering it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he was the original Joel Gertner because I don't even think Joel was doing this at this time. Yeah, right. Yokozuna just standing there stone faced. That's that right there is Roman Reigns' cousin, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> or uncle, whatever the hell. I don't know. Cousin, uncle, I don't know. They're all cousins. Well, you know, I gotta say too that Cornette's mic skills to this day are still some of the best ever. Yeah. He can like he can like talk a mile a minute and he never stuttered, man. That's impressive. Oh yeah. And I'm not like being sarcastic. He's Yeah, he could Man, he could talk anybody into their damn seat. I mean, I realize that was his whole job, but I like how he's got two managers. One to, you know, be his, be his mouthpiece, and the other one to be Japanese, I guess. Yep. Look, if you have Mr. Fuji standing next to you, you're going to look more uh, you're going to look more Japanese. Why does his tennis racket say wild thing, by the way? Cuz he's Jim Cornette. I guess. He had some of the weirdest friggin' racket cases. Are we going to get a bonsai here? Oh, duh. <laughs> Man, look at it. He's like sweating profusely and he hasn't even moved. Bonsai! <laughs> God rest his soul, but man, holy crap, was he a sweater. All right, well, that's the end of that. Luckily. Mercifully. Yeah. Well, we've got another classic coming up next. Hmm. It is the... Uh, well, I'll just... I'll, I'll tease it. It's the Undertaker versus the Under Faker from the next year, SummerSlam 1994. This is going to be a classic. Yeah, man. They just really had it out for that, man. That's SummerSlam. I know. That's why I said, I was like, who did Taker piss off, like, in the early 90s, like, where they're like, every summer, you're getting screwed? Well, you know, it's maybe too late if it's Kamala. Um. Holy hell. Who, by the way, would have a match against Jim Duggan at Bash of the Beach 1995? Not joking. Oh, man. Minor non-PG alert. That put the ashes in the seats. <laughs> oh, man, when I hear Kamala, I think ratings. But anyway. Then you throw Jim Duggan in there. Holy crap. Oh, my Sign gosh. Sign me up, man. Oh. That, that, was, that was the main event, right? Yeah, well, well, yeah, it, w- it went. Well, no, it wasn't quite the main event. It was it was the, the warmer up match because it went on right before the Renegade defended the TV title against Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff. So there you go. That was the main event. You want to talk about oh, asses man. in seats. <laughs> Boom. Oh, my God. God rest the renegade soul, man, but good Lord. Oh, man. By the way, I feel bad about this. I didn't know until this many days ago that the renegade is dead. Yeah, didn't he take his own life? I don't it, remember. I don't. I don't know. I think- uh, I'd have to do a little bit of research on that. Maybe I can do that during the break. All right, you ready uh, for the list, bro? Let's do it, bro. I believe it is time for... The list, the list bro. bro. Oh, yeah. New sound effects for the win. All right. Uh, these are the top ten worst SummerSlam matches, bro. Let's get it on. All right, number ten. I said Kane... Versus Bray Wyatt, 2013 Ring of Fire match. <laughs> the match itself was uh, meh. It just like it. It was like, what's the point? Nobody. Uh, okay, first of all, like no one was gonna get caught on fire, and second, uh, they had. I think it was Harper threw like a a jacket on the fire to get in the ring. Do you remember that part? Or yep. something like he threw something. On yeah, there. he yeah. threw his jacket on. Yeah, it was uh, yeah. something. So. <laughs> That uh, 
just holy crap. But, uh, yeah, so it was super lame. Nobody got caught on fire. Nothing happened. It was just a um, big buildup for nothing. Uh, number nine, I said Shane. Oh, no, that was amazing. I, I disagree. Sorry. Wow. But anyway, go on. Number, number nine, I said Shane McMahon versus Eric Bischoff, 2003 Falls Count Anywhere match. The reason I have the reason I have I'm it so have to low. Disagree with that one because I kind of liked it. Well, the reason I had it so low is because I don't think it was meant to be a good match. You know, I mean, it was Eric Bischoff, so. But eh, I yeah. don't know. It was okay. I, I like I liked that it progressed some stuff. That was. Yeah, it was it was all right. Uh, number eight, I said Ric Flair versus Mick Foley, two thousand six. This was just two feeble yeah. old men having a slap fight in the ring. <laughs> And that was the uh, the I quit match, wasn't it? Uh, I don't. Last man standing. I think it was. I, I think, don't remember. I think you might be thinking about their match at the previous pay per view. Um, I'm not sure. Let me see. Uh, well, I'm gonna pull it up right now because I don't think it had any special stip. Uh, oh yeah, it was an I quit match. You're right. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, not to disagree with you again, but I thought that match was good when compared to their last piece of crap the pay per view before. <laughs> Was that the one where with uh, the thumbtacks and whatnot? Oh, wait, no, the, no, well, no, because it was just a quote wrestling match. Wow, yeah, because if there's one thing we want to see Ric Flair and Mick Foley in is just a plain wrestling match against each other. <laughs> I think they actually sold that match based on that. Good grief. Because Foley's like, I can do more than just uh, hardcore and... And we're like, no, you can't. Yeah, no, yeah. Then he proved it. <laughs> he and I proved love Mick Foley. Don't get me wrong. Oh no, but he could back in the day. I mean, he just like you know he was okay. But now it's like no, you just fall off of things and fall into things and get hit with things. So, uh, uh number seven, the oddities versus Kai and Tai, nineteen ninety eight. Go to hell. <laughs> what the hell? What do you mean go to hell? Because I reminded you of that. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, there you go. Uh, everybody remember yeah. that one. What are you What are you talking about, man? This one had Golga and Dick to Go in it. Dick to Go. <laughs> oh yeah. Number Thank s- you, Bruce. Thank you, Bruce and Conrad, for that one. Oh Roll hell top. yeah! Freaking love it. I've never looked at that name and thought Dick to Go until Bruce said it. Well, it's funny because it's like right there. It's I in know. there. It's not even like not even like make stuff up. It's right. <laughs> I uh, know. It's it's. How did I miss this? I don't know. Probably because nobody thinks of Dick Togo. So yeah, it's true. Number six, we had to get there. Bret Hart versus Isaac Yankum, DDS, nineteen ninety five. Oh, good God! Oh I yeah. That piece of crap. Yeah. Keep in mind, by the way, this is Bret Hart Look versus the future Kane. At the at the time, he was facing a future mayor and a future WWE Hall of Famer, but we did not know that. Yeah. Hell, at the time, he was facing the future fake Diesel. There's so much crap with that. <laughs> Speaking of which, uh, so let's let's stay with the fake Diesel in the 1995. I said number five, Diesel versus King Mabel. Oh man, yeah. And if, I actually have that on another list upcoming soon. Anyways. <laughs> wow. Well, and I'm sure all of you out there are wondering, how is this only number five on your list? Stay tuned. Number four. Stay tuned. Number Sorry. four, let's go back a year. I said Undertaker versus Undertaker 1994. Yeah. Uh, speaking, of, speaking of which, you and I on this very podcast are, uh, you know what, I'll just... Spoilers. Anyway, it's uh yeah, that's a thing. And uh my god, I feel bad because this guy is so good and he made my list twice. Number three said Undertaker versus Giant Gonzalez, nineteen ninety three, which we literally just reviewed. So let's just say this, okay. Number one, he er, in his early days he wasn't a SummerSlam guy. And number two You don't say they were consecutive they were consecutive years. <laughs> Yeah. Man. I'm looking at it now like Kamala, uh, Giant Gonzalez, the fake Undertaker in three straight years. Oh, what the man. hell did he do to piss somebody off? Oh, my God. And I think 96, didn't he take on Kama? Yeah. That wasn't that bad, though. It was okay. but And then 97, yeah. he had like a little 
little wrestling match with some guy named Bret Hart. So yeah, yeah, the uh, heart and soul. Yeah. Uh, Actually, no- now I think about it, his next two SummerSlams would definitely make up for that bad crap one. So we're, he's good. We're good. Yeah, that's true. He's had he's had a few SummerSlam moments, like in 2015. <laughs> yeah. Uh, even though that was a weird ass finish. Number. Hey, we were there. The, right. Wait, were we? I don't remember. <laughs> number number two, Batista versus the Great Khali, two thousand seven. Oh God, yes. <laughs> who, who who watched this thinking, man, this might be a good one, <laughs> sleeper of the night? I actually had no hope for that, and I tried to just be just ah uh, man. Yeah. You tried to be positive, and uh, uh, WWE wasn't giving you much reason to be with this one. That uh, they're just setting themselves up for failure. And number one. The Cat versus Terry Reynolds thong stink face match from 2000. I, I don't see anything wrong with that whatsoever. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the premise sounds sexy. Then you watch it and you're like, the hell is this? It's just, it's like an attractive car crash. <laughs> oh, man. Have you, speaking of the cat, have you seen her lately? Because, man, uh, she's went downhill. No. Wow. That sucks. Yeah. Uh, ever since she left Jerry Lawler, man. Who would have thought Jerry that, the King Lawler... Does that just mean that sound weird? I know, I was going to say, who would have thought Jerry the King Lawler was probably the one thing holding her together? <laughs> but then again, from what I heard, uh, while she was in WWE, behind Jerry Lawler's back, she was, uh, you know, giving the goods out, if you know what I mean. Mm. That's just rumor and innuendo, though. According to rumor and innuendo, she was giving the goods out. <laughs> Roll Tide. <laughs> She, uh, they were getting up in them guts. So, anyway. Wow. <laughs> Move along. Yeah. Moving on. Uh, right after this, we're, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, it's going to be another fantastic Undertaker-esque SummerSlam watch-along. Oh, man. I just, um, I'll leave it at that, and you'll see when we come back. But anyway, uh, l- let's just say that match was on the list that you just heard, bro. And and after that, we will go to Greg with his list. Bro, 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 bro. be right back. Bro, 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 bro. Small Town Mentality Podcast with your host, Ben. A podcast about nothing and everything. A podcast where we get together with friends, drink beer, and see where the conversation takes us. We don't edit. We don't care what people say. It's small town people with a small town mentality. It gets offensive at times, lots of swearing, and a whole lot of not caring. Available everywhere you get podcasts. You can find us on Twitter at STMPod, on Instagram at STMPodcast, and on Facebook at Small Town Mentality Pod. We'll see you there. We are back on the Podcast Wrestling Society, ladies and gents, and we have another <laughs> lovely SummerSlam match for The Undertaker to watch with you here. It is from the next year after the match we just watched in 1993. This is from SummerSlam 1994. Undertaker versus Under Faker. Oh, yeah. It's Ted DiBiase's Undertaker, who is actually Brian Lee in cosplay, taking on the real Undertaker, who should have changed his name to Mark Calloway when he became the, the American badass, you know. Shut up! <laughs> I say that jokingly by the way there's an idiot we know no, he of doesn't. They, him and him and his oh. buddy agreed no oh yeah because i'm the one who reported this to you right not the other way around <laughs> all right you told me about the combo you guys had anyways move on yeah yeah okay anyway if y'all want to watch with us and why wouldn't you if you still got your uh wwe network pulled up go to SummerSlam 1994 and go to the time mark, 2 hours, 36 minutes, 30 seconds. Oh, yeah. This is closing the show, ladies and gentlemen. Just think about that. Not the epic cage match. This. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll get to that when we when we start this match. But, uh, yeah, if everybody's ready, let's, uh, let's count them down, shall we, Greg? Are you ready? Hold on, hold on. Okay, I think I'm ready. All right. Let's count it down here. Got to prepare, man. When I say go, hit play. 
Three, two, one, go. Man, I remember as a kid when I first started watching wrestling, we were going through... Wow, yeah. <laughs> He's looking down at Brian Lee. I love this. <laughs> Oh, man. Uh, I think this was the debut of the Purple Gloves, too, if I remember correctly. I actually like the Purple Glove look a lot better. Man, Brian Lee just, like, as a kid, I was like, man, that's awesome. And, like, as an adult, I'm like, holy hell, they don't look anything alike. Him and his, well, him and his henna tattoos. <laughs> oh. Well, yeah. Well, the tattoos like his are, like, did he have them for this? I don't know. Wow, what was... Holy. I mean, I know he's a biker, so I assume he had the Undertaker. Yeah, he had he had tats. No, Brian Lee. Oh, Brian. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think he had the same tattoos as Taker. I think I think they said they had to to uh, airbrush those on. When was the last time, by the way, you saw Undertaker do a drop down leapfrog? I used to do. Used to pull that every so often back then. Yeah, that was that's crazy. I guarantee you wouldn't do it now. Oh hell no. He couldn't even do a drop down now. Uh oh. Brian Lee trying to no sell. It looks like something out of the Walking Dead. Yeah. Everybody pay close attention to that giant ass urn that uh, Paul Bearer is dragging around with him, by the way. Oh, oh he almost lost him. That almost was almost lost. bad. <laughs> I loved that casket, by the way. Oh, he sat up. Yeah, you know what I love, though? i got to point out, that epic bow tie on Earl Hebner. Oh, well, hell yeah. Uh, I forgot to mention this in the last match, by the way. They showed Howard Finkel earlier, and they didn't, like, his name tag said in parentheses, the Fink. Or, excuse me, in quotation marks, the Fink. Like, that's it. Not his real name, just the Fink. That's what he is. Yeah, it's like, really? Like, that was just a nickname. Why don't you have his, like, I don't know, I just found that weird. He's always done that. We have two bow ties rocking tonight. We got one on uh, the Million Dollar Man and one on Earl Hebna. Yeah, but the one on Million Dollar Man to Versace probably costs more than your house, so. Wow. It's different. Oh, man. And we got that close up there. Brian Lee showing hashtag low key big hog. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I wasn't these... looking. Oh, lies. And he's just awkwardly getting into I think position. This is the very first event, by the way, at that new arena. Uh, they used to go the Rosemont Horizon, but now they're at, at the, uh, what is it, United Center? I have no idea. Oh! How's that Jordan built? Nice. Yeah, this, uh, as I was saying earlier, like, as a kid, I was going through the, uh, the, the, I don't know if it was Blockbuster or one of them uh, video stores. For those of you that remember video stores, um, I was walking through there with a friend, and we were trying to pick out like some wrestling tapes to watch over the weekend, and we saw this, and I'm like, Undertaker versus Undertaker, that's going to be awesome. And I was sadly well, disappointed. <laughs> well, who wouldn't want to be disappointed? What's wrong with you? <laughs> you didn't like this epic match right here? Yeah, the match that Dave Meltzer said, you know, nothing will we'll ever compare to the great Dave Meltzer. <laughs> Shut up. Oh, here we go. Oh, what that Man, what a... <laughs> <laughs> man. Oh, I was like, get the hell out of this. Get all the way to this uh, epic uh, crash. <laughs> Can we get yeah. the water down? What the hell was that? Uh, stun gun. Like a stun gun, but he was going to throw him over the top, but he didn't go. He came back in and ran to the corner for shelter. <laughs> yeah. Um, just wow. Here we go, Jack Gonzalez. Oh, never mind. <laughs> by hell. I took two clotheslines. Uh, by the way, do you want to know what the star rating was for this match, Greg? Uh, negative two stars. Well, you were close. Negative one star. Oh, Meltzer said it. Therefore, it is. I wouldn't give this a negative one star. I'd give it, like, half a star. There we go. Another, another epic hit. Man, that's just, like, the offense in this. And I, I'll say this. They they were like, well, 
their their time was severely cut because the match before this, the uh, the cage match between Brett and Owen, went like twenty minutes long. However, th- that that tells me there was twenty more minutes of this planned. <laughs> I don't think that would have made it better. Uh, <laughs> look at the positives. I will say. Um, Half full, man. Come on. I will say the build-up to this match I thought was great. And the only then, time you get Leslie Nielsen involved, thirty will win. Mother of God. Uh, yeah. Well, the I thought this the build-up. Guy's up, promoting Monday Night Raw on his shirt. That's back when it was cool to wear that shirt. Yeah. Uh, well, this the the, the build-up to this match was cool. I thought, for those of you who don't know. Uh, th- th- was the Undertaker injured or something? Like, what wh- what happened to him to put yeah, him out? Yeah, he was legit injured. So then, like, twenty guys buried him in the casket. L O L ninety four. Oh, that's and when he. he a match, that's when he rose. He, he rose to the heavens because you know. Yeah. The Undertaker then, would, would definitely his spirit would go to to heaven. All right. Yeah. And then Million Dollar Man a couple of weeks after WrestleMania said he was bringing the Undertaker back because he brought him in to begin with. And, yeah, that's where it all came from. And then Undertaker, started, I mean, Paul Bear started calling him a fake. You and know, Leslie Nielsen was hired to find him, and he was going to like places all around the country, like uh, car car places and donut <laughs> shops, and we were like, "Oh yeah, I saw the Undertaker coming here the other day and buy you this." And, yeah. Wow, that's okay. Well, maybe that part wasn't epic, <laughs> but the idea <laughs> I thought was funny. the 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 only thing this was missing. Was brother love? I think that really would have set yeah. this off. I think if brother love was involved, I think this match would have been a lot better. I think you may be the only person in the entire world that thinks that. <laughs> I'm joking, but yeah. Oh, I here we go. Were. Tombstone, tombstone, boom! And oh my god, he damn near killed him. <laughs> Uh, you want to know what the uh, what the match before this, the Brett and Owen Hart cage match, got star rating wise? I'll say four or five. Five stars. And he sets up. I'll be damned. I I, I thought it was five stars, but you know Meltzer. You know, yeah, you know, it has to take it place in Japan. Well, I'm my boss at work. You know, got to find something wrong. Even if it's perfect, <laughs> something's wrong. Wow, what the hell? That was a weird like way to transition out of that. Frickin' Brian Lee had, like, the hardest time. Man! Oh, man! He jumped up and caught air with it. Good dude boy. dead. He is dead. See that one dude getting super amped in the back. <laughs> yeah. But, uh... He's sick in the head, man. You I can't kill him! <laughs> We're gonna break his border bay, bro. Well, you know what went on before... We're walk again. We're gonna put him in a wheelchair, bro. Wow. And here he goes... Tombstone numero dos. Cinco, cinco, cinco. It's never enough. Go. Now I'm trying to get some excitement going into this match because, wow, this is boring. Um, <laughs> why, why was that Brett and Owen match, like, bookended by such crap, by the way? Because you know what match went before Brett and Owen for the uh, the WWF title? What's the race for Owen Beasley? Number three. Nope, oh, it was Jeff Jarrett versus Mabel. Three. One. Oh, yeah. Two. Oh, money. Three. And the real Mabel, Mark Mabel Calloway wins. Mabel will have an amazing match at the next summer, so we'll get into that later. Uh. Yeah. Well, because <laughs> Jeff Jarrett took on Mabel, or defeated Mabel, actually, in five minutes, 45 seconds for three-fourths of a star. <laughs> Still higher rated than that, this. That one was shortened. This one had more time. Look at freaking Ted DiBiase. He's like, nope, I'm out. Peace. You're on your own, p- prime time. And here comes a couple of jobbers. I mean, druids. Whoa, what do you mean jobbers? Those are developmental guys, all right? <laughs> one of them's Pat Patterson. The other one's Brother Love under a hood. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just guessing. You at certainly this wish Brother Love was here, man. You're damn right I do. And this is like what one of three times he's used that. When I was a kid, light when up I was thing. A kid, dude, I marked so hard for that 
thing lighting up. I don't know why. Yeah, well, you're not alone. I, I did too. Why. I thought it was awesome. I'm like, how did they get it to do that? And then as an adult, I'm like, no, like it's a freaking gigantic flashlight. That's how. It's Wait. Like, uh, <laughs> so the spirit in there is a flashlight, not ashes. Yeah. But then we find out later it's actually Paul Bearer's ashes. But, you know, whatever. That comes later, I guess. I don't know. What the hell, dude? You had to say it. Freaking CM Punk said it. What do you mean? Or he insinuated well, it, at least. Go, Undertaker. You gotta dig him. <laughs> say what? That's fine. It said, go, Undertaker. And the one below it said, you gotta dig him. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> oh, lights flashing, man. Like, this is... This is when I feel they like start getting a seizure. Yeah, I notice the older I get, strobe lights like don't like do well with me. The hey, macho the Macho Man! man. Ooh, I remember correctly, yeah. this was the last ever wrestling appearance or uh, pay per view appearance. Look at my gigantic cowboy hat! Oh, dig it! So big I could fit that urn under it. Oh yeah, couple of slim gems. Next year at summertime, I'm going to be, <laughs> my sponsor Slim Jim is going to be all over Bish at the beach. Dig it! <laughs> There's Leslie Nielsen and that other guy. Yeah, that's, that's Bob Kraft, the owner of the New England Patriots right there. Oh, yeah, it is. It is Bob Kraft. Holy crap. Wow. I was like, he looks familiar. Who the hell? Money in the bank. Money in the bank briefcase. Uh, no, it's a contract. We don't say we're just Oh, my, yeah, I'm sorry. Bob Kraft is going to cash it in. The Patriots are going for the Super Bowl. <laughs> Patriots are taking it from the, feet, from the Philadelphia Eagles, dude. <laughs> we're cashing it in. <laughs> Where's Leslie Nielsen? Still dead. <laughs> oh. Wow, that was craptastic. Man. You know what? what's weird is three people we saw in that last segment uh, are dead. That's kind of a bummer. Yeah, it is. Wesley Nielsen, Paul Bearer, Macho Man. Dead. Dang. Um, <laughs> yeah, so that... By the way, ladies and gentlemen, that was how they ended SummerSlam 1994. If you watched with us, you watched in duration until the final second when they went off the air. Mother of God. <laughs> I'm just glad it wasn't that crappy Brett and Owen match. Yeah, I know. Who? Why? Why would the WWF title close the show? Thirty-two minutes, seventeen seconds. So let we, me get th- we demand fake Undertaker. <laughs> so if if I get this right, if I'm, if I'm doing my math according to you know uh, people who said this stuff correctly, Brett and Owen was only supposed to go twelve minutes. The Undertaker versus Fake Undertaker was supposed to go twenty. Eight, almost twenty nine minutes. <laughs> oh my god! Who put that together, man? Who booked this? I mean, they uh, they shortened the epic Mabel Jeff Jarrett match to five minutes. I could have been <laughs> fifteen minutes easy, man. Uh, let's look at some of the star ratings. By the way, uh, opening match of the night was um, Bam Bam Bigelow and IRS defeating. Fatu and Samu via disqualification in six minutes forty five seconds. Uh, didn't get a real, real, real quick. There was supposed to be a tag match, a tag title match, and for some reason the Headshrinkers lost to Shawn Michaels and Diesel the night before at a house show. Wow, never understood it. That's um odd. Well, that one didn't get any stars, so I guess it was a dud. Uh, next match, Alundra Blaze defends the women's championship in a winning effort against Bull Nakano. Uh, eight minutes, ten seconds. That match got three and a four star. Razor Ramon defeated Diesel to become the new Intercontinental Champion. 13 minutes, 55 seconds. And that one got two and three, four stars. So that was like midway. Uh, then Tatanka defeated Lex Luger in a Who's the Better American match. I just made that up. Uh, six minutes, two stars. And then, of course, you know, if if I was booking this show, this is how I would have done it. Jeff Jarrett and Mabel, and then the WWF title match, 
and then Brett or, or and then Undertaker versus Undertaker. You know, so that that. <sighs> My God, I just. Well, one of the things like, you know, this is like you know thinking like logistically. So the whole cage match erupts into like a huge brawl with the whole Hart family. I don't know if you remember that part. Mm, I so, I forget. It's been so long. It starts, it starts with it's so it starts with Anvil like clotheslining the hell out of Bulldog, who's in the front row watching, and it knocks Bulldog and Diana over, and then uh, I think Owen and Anvil both get in the ring and beat the crap out of Brett. They lock the cage, and all the Hart family's trying to get in. And they're knocking them off the cage and stuff, and they finally get in, and Owen and Anvil escape. And, like, what I'm thinking about, like, okay, all that happened. They cut all the promos in the back. Then they take the cage off, because they had to do it manually back then, to have another match. <laughs> wow. Why? You know, just thinking about all that, you know, that's... Uh, yeah. Fantastic. I know it's a lot. Maybe I might be overthinking it. Like, man, they did all that, you yeah. know, just to tear down the cage and have another match. That should have closed the show. What are you talking about, man? Did you not just watch the same match that I watched? <laughs> Epicness. <laughs> uh, by the way, I the... guess if they had closed the show another way, we wouldn't have seen that closing shot of Leslie Nielsen and Bob Kraft. Exactly. So you know, hey, take your victories where you can get them. Uh, just for the uh, the audience here, uh, our listening audience, Undertaker versus Giant Gonzalez, the match that we reviewed earlier in the Rest in Peace match, also got a negative one star, according to Dave Meltzer in the Wrestling Observer. So, two years, two negative one star matches. Poor Undertaker. <laughs> I'm sorry. This is, I shouldn't laugh at somebody else's pain. But, well, I'm laughing because you're looking at Milter's reviews. That's why I'm laughing. But. What, do you, what, do you, what, do you, what do you mean? He is the authority, other than a certain someone we know from the date, Dayton area. But, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, of yeah, course. the authority to Conrad, and apparently you. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> wow. At Hey, Hey, it's Conrad, and at Pod Rest Society. Exactly. They love Uncle Dave. Oh, screw you. Yeah, you guys love him, but have you peed next to him? Yeah, <laughs> you had your junk out next to him. There you go. I, man, I was jealous of you for one day. Damn. Anyway, I'll never well, forget that dude. I came out of the bathroom, and I'm like, Ramon, you'll never believe who's coming out. Just watch, just watch. And he came out. <laughs> like, <"Try to> say, <laughs> no. Holy hell! I'm like, you jerk! You freaking slap room for the sharks right now! You get the hell out of this building! <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's something. All right, well, it's about that time, Greg. And you know, you know what that time is? It's time. Wish time. It's time for <laughs> the list, bro. Oh, I love our new sounders. Anyway, <laughs> well, what are your top ten worst SummerSlam matches in history, bro? Bro, bro, bro. Okay, man, this, this was tough because. There was so much crap. Had to leave something off. My list is very close to yours, by the way. All right. I mean, like, crazy. It's crazy how... Well, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, there were there were a few you said you disagreed with me on, so it's, uh, you, you've you got to have some others in in the, in those spots. All right, yeah. Um, said Kane versus Bray Wyatt. The Ring of Fire. Oh yeah. Yeah, man, that was that was that was something. It was something, all right. <laughs> uh, number nine. This, you know, it kind of hurt to put, but looking back, man, it was not that good. I said, uh, Warrior and, and Ultimate Warrior and, and uh, Rick Rude in the cage. Hmm. I gotta go back, go back and watch that because everybody says that was one of Warrior's best matches. Dude, it was like 10 minutes long, dude. It wasn't really that good of a match. Uh, yeah, I got to go back and watch it now to see. And also, I maybe it wasn't bad, but the fact that it was the main event and it was that short. Yeah, I was. Know, that, oh, for me, too. So. What year was that? 1990. 
Okay, yeah, because I, I think I was looking at that card, and I was like, man, that just seems like a super weak year. Yeah, it was. I mean, Hogan and Earthquake were on the undercard. Yeah. Hogan and Earthquake, man. Woo! I mean, I guess it could be worse. It could be Hogan and Sheik Tugboat. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when I put it like that, you know, in comparison, it's it's pretty good. I can't believe you brought up Sheik Tugboat, man. Why wouldn't uh, I? That's fair. Could have made a lot of money. <laughs> uh, sticking with that event. Oh, uh, hell man, yeah. This... <laughs> you should go back and watch this because there's some... Uh... There's some good ones on here. I said Power and Glory versus the Rockers. Oh, man. Uh, now, why it's so bad, too, is because, like, Michaels is hurt in the match. And uh, so he's, like, taken out by Hercules' chain within, like, the first 10 seconds. And it's basically just Janetti against them, too. Oh, man. Well, when I think five-star classic, I think Marty Janetti. Yeah. Right. So... <laughs> Don't get me wrong. I I think Marty was a good wrestler and all, but he's no Shawn Michaels. But no, I just wow. Um, yeah. Hey, here's fun fact: this event took place like a month before I was born. So keep that in mind, people. It got better wow. from then. Yeah. Oh, you're old. Uh, <laughs> wow. Look who's talking. Uh, uh, shut up. It doesn't help either when I tell my group of uh, my team at work. I call them hell children. Uh, Daddy's wow. here. <laughs> That's I gotta creepy. Stop that. Yeah, it's creepy uh, as hell. Well, I, I meant that because, like, you know, they're all kids. Um, yeah. Next, I said uh, Bret Hart and Isaac Yankum. Oh, man. That was that classic. <laughs> yeah. Freaking classic. Tongue in cheek much. Um, what do you mean? I'm totally serious. <laughs> oh, my mistake. The Next, evil dentist. <laughs> God, that was bad. Come on, man. It was a classic gimmick. Like, okay, two things I always think about. Vince McMahon saying, hmm, I see him in polka dots to Dusty Rhodes. <laughs> and looking at Glenn Jacobs saying, hmm, evil dentist with bad teeth. <laughs> yeah. Oh, mother of God. <laughs> Uh, next, I said one of the one of the reasons SummerSlam '92 sold out, but I didn't think the match was that good. But this was one of the reasons. I said Nails versus Virgil. Oh, mother of God! Shut your mouth. I thought that was going to make Virgil your list of best matches. <laughs> Virgil says on his Instagram all the time. Uh, he says he always says something. He goes like the time Nails and I sold out Wembley Stadium, eighty thousand people, five meatball classic. My God. <laughs> He's wow. Virgil versus Nails, man. That put the asses in the seats. Well, hell yeah. I wonder if uh, Nails afterwards told like told somebody that uh, Virgil tried to touch his pecker. Oh my god! Yeah, right. <laughs> I heard real, real quick. Bruce Pritchard on his podcast said that um, Nails was unhappy with the SummerSlam payoff, and all yeah. that did was, to me is bring back all of Virgil's comments. That was the main event, so therefore Nail should have been compensated more. So to be fair, you know, there's that. <laughs> Five meatball classic, man. Where's his money? <laughs> oh, man. Gosh. Let's see. Uh, I think the rest I have on my list, you have them all. Uh, I nice. said Batista versus the Great Khali. Hell yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I had it higher on my uh, list, though. Uh, I don't know why, yeah, but. It sucked ass. Uh, next was <laughs> Undertaker versus Undertaker. Oh, man. What do you, what do you mean, man? Bri prime time Brian Lee pretending to be Taker, baby. A.K.A. Chains. Hell, yeah. Uh, and next, that. I had this one pretty high on my list, and you had it actually low. <laughs> well, lower. I said the oddities versus kind's high. It had dick to go in it. How do you, you know, yeah, whatever. I mean, and the giant Silva and Kurgan. My God. The dude. giant Silva. Yeah, there you go. Not to be repetitive, but asses in seats. <laughs> Madison Square Garden. Boom. Exactly. When you put all those guys on there, a dancing Kurgan in a tie-dye shirt. Um, good good, good, good. Freaking. In the middle of the garden. You know, got to hit that home. 
Yeah, and the shark. The shark wearing a gold mask and a Cartman t-shirt. Boom. <laughs> Man, Good it's, God. It's getting better uh, the more I talk about it. And Funaki. Watch it now. Hell yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and the last two, uh, Diesel versus Mabel. Mm, man, that was just, that was great. <laughs> look at, yeah. just look at him. He's so friggin' huge and chocolatey. Sweaty. <laughs> what the hell? Mabel crazy, can be a top guy. <laughs> what the hell? I see him in suspenders. Showing off his, <laughs> no, every, we're moving on, moving on. Uh, <laughs> Come on. And, Last one was uh, the Undertaker versus Giant Gonzalez. That classic. Oh man, that. Uh, we're keeping people to stop listening because we keep bringing back these bad memories. Dude, I don't think it's a good <laughs> idea. Well, keep in mind, by the way. <laughs> well, keep in mind, by the way, this wasn't just like a one-off, whatever. This was a rematch between these two after what we had previously seen at WrestleMania. Because that one went over so well. Oh, yeah, went over like a lead balloon and a fart in church all at once. <laughs> a lead balloon farting in church. Yeah, we were talking about one of the greatest wrestlers in the history of pro wrestling and The Undertaker. Yeah. I just, I don't get how they <laughs> go together well. I was hoping you were going to go there. I was hoping and you brought it home. Boom. <laughs> I can't even keep a straight face. <laughs> oh, man. Giant. Gonzalez, man, El Gigante, man. On the uh, very, very, very slim chance that anyone's listening that can do it, I want a giant Gonzalez elite figure, by the way. So just, you know. Yeah. Uh, hit us up on this. Slip into our DMs on, on Twitter. It's at Pod Rust Society. And, uh, and I'll get the I'll get the message on to Greg, and we'll, we'll, get, we'll get him that, uh, that elite El Gigante. All right. Gosh. Well, I want to reenact with my figures that classic. I already have an Undertaker little, figure. Well, you do WrestleMania 9, too. Just got like a little rag and like have some water on it as chloroform. Man. <laughs> oh, yeah. You can smell it. You can smell the ether. Oh. All I can smell is BS. Anyways, moving on. <laughs> I, can, uh, I can smell the sweat coming from Jim Ross wearing a toga in the <laughs> beating hot sun. Good grief. All right. Well, that's that list. Uh, we continue on. I'm our... sorry, by the way. Yeah, you should be. We continue on after hey, you this. Did it too, jerk. Whatever. Don't blame me. Uh, I'm, I'm the podcast host. All right. I don't get any of the blame. It's all on you, buddy. But we we will return uh, with a not so bad, just kind of a weird uh, Undertaker watch along match to finish out this podcast. Bro, be right back. Drama City Productions presets. Hey, it's Ben here, host of the Regular Stories Podcast, a podcast where I interview interesting people about their lives. These are not celebrities. They're not the elite. These are regular people, and these are their stories. You can follow us on Facebook at Regular Stories and on Instagram at Regular Stories. We are everywhere that you can get a podcast. We are on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, TuneIn, just about everywhere else. Look up Regular Stories Podcast. All right, this is our third and final watch along. It is a Undertaker watch along again, and this one holds special meaning to you and I, Greg, because we were both there. Yeah, it was man. It was a great night. It was. I had a. I will say uh, to this day, still my favorite SummerSlam that I've attended. Nice. Yeah, it was... And I've uh, been uh, three of them, so... Yeah. It was really great. It was my first time in New York, my first time at a pay-per-view, and yeah, so it was a big time for me, and uh, yeah, it was great. It was a great weekend. We went to NXT, the very first takeover outside of... Uh, outside of uh, well, the very first Full NXT Sail. event outside of Full Cell, too. Yeah, there you go. And so... And we joined in on the, uh, the first ever Full Cell Sucks chant, I believe. Oh, yeah. <laughs> then we went to yeah. SummerSlam, and then we went to Raw. So, needless to say, it was huge, big league weekend. 
the number one vacation ever. Oh yeah, and this it one was so big. The last two matches that we covered sucked. This one didn't suck. I actually thought it was real. It was fairly good, but it had an awkward ass ending and it had some stuff to laugh at. So. We are going to be covering all of that. If you want to watch along, pull up SummerSlam 2015. It is three hours, 19 minutes, 40 seconds. I'm the looking first at... The ever uh, four-hour SummerSlam, by the way. Yeah, it was the biggest SummerSlam in history. So, uh, up until that point. So, it big league. Live from the Barclays, ladies and gents. So, are you looking at The Undertaker's face right now in the corner? Yeah, it's very creepy. So go here and start this so I can get off my screen. <laughs> Him and his lazy eye. All right. Um, all right, you ready to start this, Greg? Let's Buckled do it. in. All right. Three, two, one, play. So can we turn it down? Yeah. <laughs> the Undertaker getting. Man, I got muted. We can't hear Michael Cole. Yeah. Oh uh, man. Three nineteen forty because the match starts. Very abruptly, as you will see right here. Undertaker yeah. getting in. There's Brock just bum rushing him, man. Good lord, just knee knee in the knee in the crap out of the dead man. Holy crap, he's he's JBLing him uh, like he's Blue Meanie. forgot about that. Like I said, like I told Greg, I haven't watched that. I don't know if I said this yet. Uh, I have not watched this back since we watched it live. So this is. Kind of cool for me. Oh, oh, took a spill. Man, the way Brock goes out of the ring is just, like, I know, looks he bad. Like, he does that exact same roll that uh, he did when Cain Velasquez, like, knocked the hell out of him. Remember, he fell back and rolled to the cage. Wow. He does that exact same roll when he falls out of the ring. I think that's just his thing now. I guess so. This was the last time the Undertaker's hair looked semi-decent. Well, actually, it, 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 it looks pretty good now, I should say. Should, I shouldn't make fun of the dead man's hair. Uh, I just, side note, I like how you always go back to Kane beating Brock's ass. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It always works its way into the conversation somehow. <laughs> this was back when they could still use pyro. Yeah. Trippy. Oh, dang. Uh, man, Brock. Brock As you just, see, he's going right for the MMA style from the whole, like, right at the beginning. Yep. Dude, Brock just beat the tar out of Taker in this match. Yep. The little Nate's getting the hell out of the way. Look at the look on his face. He's like, by God, I get the, get the hell out of here. I hope they're paying me well for this. <laughs> by the way, this match... Little Nate. <laughs> yeah. This match closed the show. Um... It was not yeah, the, the not, title match. Yeah, not the not epic close. John Stewart heel turn. <laughs> well, the match before this was Kevin Owens versus Cesaro. Kevin Owens pulled double duty. I think him and uh, Sasha Banks, too. Yeah. Because uh, before that was the epic. Oh, here we dude, go. F5. Do you remember? I, I, remember, I thought what? that was it, dude. I really did. Yeah. When we were there. I forgot, but oh man, he's got the freaking Brock selling the hell out of the goozle. And look at how white his freaking legs are, man! Holy crap! Colonel Colonel Brian got crap on him. I know, right? And he's not even ginger. <laughs> oh man! No, he has a soul. Ooh, dang! I remember when we watched that live, and I was just like, "Dang, that looked painful," and it still does on the playback. This match was a lot more like, like just go forward than their WrestleMania match. Yeah, man, he's already his back's already messed Suplex up. Suplex City. I yeah, uh, well, his his the WrestleMania match I was not a fan of at all, and it wasn't just, well, yep, he yelled it. It wasn't <laughs> it wasn't just because Undertaker lost. I just I thought the match sucked. But uh, yeah, was, as I was saying before, the uh, the Owens and uh, Cesaro match was the Team Bella versus Team PCB versus Team Bad uh, nine woman tag. Man, get a close up of that cauliflower ear. Yeah, that's pretty disgusting. 
man, face first, Goldberg style. Oh, I know. The crowd, Gold- if you'll notice, is extremely hot. They were like, they were hell into this match. Oh yeah, they were. And um, hey guys, this is where, Ooh. yeah. I think this is where Brock's busted open, right? Yeah. Did he bleed in this match? I think he bleeds in this match. And I think we were all like, oh, God, here come the gloves. Yeah, here they come right now, I think. Yeah. And then we are all like, I think I'm going to stop it. I think he legit got hard weighed. Yeah, because that doesn't look like a razor blade job right there. That, that looks for but real. You can see it. Like, we go back and watch, you can see when it starts to bleed. Holy crap. It's uh, like, Guy's got a I'm a John Cena guy t shirt. <laughs> Some guy has a sign that says believe in seven. Is that like the Dustin Rose character or uh, I'm thinking more well, it could be. I'm thinking more like the ooh, the Kevin Thorne character. Paul Heyman just looking yeah, disapprovingly. Well, of course. Hey, that guy in the front row with the Cena shirt's like you. For those of you that don't know, uh Greg was in full John Cena Mark Garb in the <laughs> At this show, <laughs> rally towel and all. I did Yeezy it two knows. years in a row. I might do it this year too. I think I'm going go with the lime green one this year. Well, I went with the lime green one to uh, Raw, I believe, or maybe it was SmackDown. I think it was SmackDown. And then um, I was wearing my Seth Rollins never shuts up T-shirt. Man, vintage Undertaker. Vintage. You can just hear Michael Cole touching himself. Vintage. Again, I got to go into how, how, how hot this crowd is. reason I keep saying that is because of all the source times I went to, usually the crowd's dead at the last match. Yeah. Like, this whole event was so good that every, like, basically every match, like, everyone was into. Yeah. There was, I don't think the crowd was dead throughout this whole night. This was, I mean, they were. No, they weren't. New York this crowds were fairly crowds, good. Even for, us, even for WrestleMania standards, too. Yeah, that was like never dead. It was one of my favorites. Well, and this was their first and uh, first SummerSlam in the Barclays, so this was like the first yeah, time cause doing it, this. Because like every time SummerSlam was in New York before, it was either in Long Island or in uh, the Garden. Yeah, so this was this was a big deal all the way around. These two freaking this was like one of the last times I saw Taker like really hardcore bring it in a match. Yeah, part of me thinks he wastes his entire take on this match. Four out of ten. So let's go four out of ten sign. <laughs> <laughs> we missed that. Good lord. I didn't notice that till just now. Uh, for your reference, by the way, Greg and I are um, like right behind where the announcers sit in the upper deck front row. Yeah, so we got like a great view of everything. Yep. Same uh, same seats for SmackDown as well. For for NXT, we were. To the, we were on the hard camera side, the upper deck, and a couple rows back, sitting next yeah, to one and, uh, lonely uh, SOB. We we're sitting next to a guy with a look. <laughs> I was sitting next to a guy with a look. You sat on the other side of me. You were like, "Yeah, you get seat two. I, I get seat three. Well, I made that clear when I bought them. Yeah, you did. <laughs> I, just, I was like, "There's one." Seat, like there's like one seat in the whole row, and the, the first one is taken. The other rest are available. That tells me that this person, and not that there's anything wrong with this, but bought one ticket for themselves. I'm like, it's got to Who be a loner who's not going to have a fun time. And sure enough, he did not have a fun time. He was miserable the whole night. So the golf go. clapped once. What are you talking about? <laughs> By the way, this shows you. I mean, this was only three years ago, man, and. Like just look at little time flies. Yeah, I know. Just look at little things like no LED boards, no. Uh, they they got the old tube TV monitors on the desk. Oh, here it comes. F five. Oh, I table. think at this point we were all like, oh god, it's, he's gonna kill him. Yeah, I was like, Taker's done. He's he's literally a dead man yeah. now. And also, uh, you know, the pyro for lack of pyro nowadays too. Yep, pyro. Um, slightly different. Set slightly. The raw tables down there, not on the stage. Mm hmm. Ooh. That was bad. But Charles Robinson still has that epic haircut, so. He's had that same haircut since 1994. Yeah. He probably uses the same (laughs) salad bowl every time he goes to the barber. (laughs) 
Why do we crap on the refs every time we do this? Like, it's without part fail. Of the, of the match. Also, we'll see if you take her pissed his pants. Like, Brock Lesnar scared the hell out of him. <laughs> well, that goes back to the epic promo he cut on John Cena. He's going to have something rolling yeah. down his leg. You know, you know what's going to be rolling down his leg? Piss. <laughs> do you remember that? I do. Man, just the articulation. Wow, these guys all have signs for every number. <laughs> oh, Patrick, I didn't realize that. Yeah. That takes some dedication, bro. Speaking of which, or, or by the way, not speaking of which, but by the way, freaking Brock has blood, sweat, and drool running down his face right now. That is a deadly combo of... Like a beast. Uh, what the hell? He looks like he's having a stroke. I don't remember that part. How did you figure that? Then you see Taker, he was like twitching and just kind of like laying there looking off. And oh, nothing. well, you suck out. Brock was on the screen. Sorry, okay. No, it looked like freaking Undertaker was having oh, a stroke. So it's you having a stroke and standing up and jumping around with blood coming out of your face looking pissed. That's a stroke. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. By the way, speaking of Brock, while I'm thinking of him, uh, Bruce Pritchard was saying that the... Uh, well, I guess Brock said this. It was said on the Bruce Pritchard podcast. I never heard this in an interview. Ugh. Now Taker's spitting. Uh, but I guess that's that uh, infamous... Uh, oh, here we go. Man, he got some air God, with that man. one. Took that one. Right? That infamous uh, WrestleMania 19 shooting star press that he botched. I guess he said somebody suggested it to him, and he did it. Yeah, he wouldn't tell who. Well, they were thinking it might be a, it, it, one of the possibilities that came up was Michael Hayes, old Doc Hendricks. Now, I seriously, like, thought this was 100% it. Man, I know. Wait, wait, he freaking wrapped his legs around Taker's neck there for a second. I was like, Taker wins! Taker wins! But I forgot Brock needs at least five finishers to beat him. Two. Oh! Five and a half. Wow. Just ask Roman. Still hasn't got the job done. He I'll will in a couple of weeks. I don't know, man. We'll see. I, I mean, I, I fully expect him to. But knowing WWE with the way they like to just, like, sw swerve, bro. Like, I don't know. What is it with the guys named Vince and swerves? <laughs> I, I don't know. You know, all of WrestleMania this past year was freaking swerves. I think this is like one of the most iconic moments in the whole match, right? I think this is it. Yeah, this is the this is the meme moment. Yeah, right here. Here it is. You and I laughed Dude, our this asses kind of like off. Such a huge laugh and pop in the arena. Yeah, right here. This I love part. this. Oh, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the freaking eyes of Taker, Mother of God, man. Like I said, this was... Is this the very first good match that we've ever done a watch-along to? Yeah. Yeah, because we've all done... We've done stinkers up until now. Oh, oh I thought... Well, we did it on purpose, by the way. I saw that we picked the... Oh, this is a good one! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's got to make that clear. We never, like, watched, like, Undertaker versus Jack and Zoll's expecting a, a freaking five-star classic. Yeah, and then we were let down at the end of it. We purposely <laughs> picked it. Oh, man. <laughs> That looks like it might actually hurt. Because he's cranking up that arm. It only took Brock two years to finally figure out what a freaking uh, Americana should be. <laughs> By the way, oh, last ride! Last ride! That, he did not get him up for that one. Two, oh! And not to be, not to be like that guy, but remember we were sitting down like, oh, last ride's coming. Yeah. <laughs> you can just tell. Yep. Well, my question is, why does he do the Kimura? Why doesn't he do the Death Clutch? Because that was like his thing in UFC for a while. It'll look at the Chrome Dome. He won one match with it, one fight with it. I thought he tried to lock it in a couple times. Plus, he had Death Clutch he on all tried, the stuff. He tried once, I think, on... Was it Overeem, maybe? I don't remember. But he won more matches with that than the Kimura. <laughs> So, 
There you go. Or match, fight, you know what I mean. Oh, Ball game. Five. Yeah, you can hear JBL now. Ball game. Good night, sweet prince. Two. I honestly thought that was it. I was like, damn it. And then when he kicked out, I was like, yeah. Man, Brock, I you even remember quickly, mouth. you're like, oh, God, he's going he's gonna, to he's gonna, he's gonna hit another one. That's going to be it. He says, trust me, all over again. Did I, I said that? I think so. No, oh, that's. I don't even remember. You remember this stuff better than I do. The one thing I really remember is the next night on Raw, you jumping out of your freaking seat for the Dudley Boys. Not that I wasn't. I just remember that. I marked hard. Yeah, you did. All them people below us were sorry that they didn't bring a poncho. <laughs> right. <laughs> Probably enough I didn't have a poncho on. you think I would. <laughs> Man. Yeah, freaking look at Lesnar. He's like beat red. And Crimson. The hell? Going for another one? Right oh. there, we knew it was over in our hearts. Rick, it's over. That's one, it. One, two. <laughs> and then Lesnar's like screaming, why? He's like Keenan on the Keenan and Kel show. He just walks in the room, something's messed up. Why? Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Was this before after you knocked over the guy's beer? I knocked over the guy's beer. Beer like way before this. <laughs> I know. I just wanted to bring it up. <laughs> uh, it hey, does it the next night. <laughs> that was water, but yes, you are right. Uh, I will say, I will say this: I didn't knock over a single drink at WrestleMania. So, no, because you know you watched your ass this time, and I mean that literally. <laughs> and there were a lot of beers to knock over. Oh, here we go. Yeah. Well, Hell's Gate. There we go. The most controversial ending ever. This was before Paul Heyman decided to just give up the ghost and cut all of his hair off. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, man. It's the beginning of the end. The, the one thing I do remember from this show, somebody was wearing a Tom Brady jersey, which I thought was weird in this arena, and he, like, Hulk hogan it. Oh, that wasn't it yet. Yeah, that's right. Here we go. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, I was like, nice. I, I didn't notice that he did that, and I was. we were walking behind him, and I was like, hey, dude, nice jersey, and he turns around, and it's, like, ripped right down the center. He's like, oh, thanks. I'm like, okie dokie. You oh, ripped man. the goat's jersey. How dare you? You're going to hell. Well, he was in New York, so I guess it's forgivable, I guess. I don't know. Man. Why would you wear that in New York? Because you're going to rip it. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, uh, here we go. Is it just me, or did no one else realize that, like, there, okay, well, there's that. There it is. Yeah. Uh, man, this is, like, the weakest lock-in of the Kimura right now. Like, wait, he didn't, he didn't tap. He didn't tap. Little Nature's telling him, no, it wasn't me. I call for the bell. You don't call for the bell, you piece of crap. Rick Flair told me I, I do it. Wow. Pinchasa! I really thought he was going to pick him up and slam him right here. Yeah. And, like, knock him out. Yeah. Uh, that would have been... That's how I thought. I was like, oh, man, it's still going to end with Brock going over. It didn't, because they ended up wanting to build to a trilogy, but... Dude, what is with these two? Not that I'm complaining, but what is with these two and one of them has to bleed every... Th oh, there you go. One of them... Oh, yeah, I forgot about the finger! They either bleed or they get concussed. Oh, that's it. That's it. Undertaker sort of kind of wins. I I've still to this day not figured out the whole point of that screw finish. Like because what was it about? they're because they wanted to make it look like Undertaker can't beat Brock. So 
I mean, that's... They proved their point because it was like, oh, look, Undertaker had to low blow him and then choke him out. Just win, baby. Undertaker looks <laughs> looks like all blown up. Look at him. Like mother of God. He ain't selling. Yeah. It was at this point the Undertaker realized I'm not coming back for a real match after this. So that well, one he would a couple months later. Yeah, he did with well the I don't know. It's like did he already sign on for that before he did this and then realized maybe I shouldn't have signed that contract. And then he tried it again. It wasn't there. Then he tried again with uh with Roman. That match was fairly decent. I mean, it wasn't Here's my thing and I'm going to get all this. send all your hate tweets to at Pod Rest Society, but Roman carried him to a really good match at, at Mania or a, a, a well, good going, match at Mania. You're going to fanboy hell for that one. Oh, I know. Roman can't carry anybody. <laughs> Roman sucks. Blah, 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 blah. Get, don't get me wrong. I didn't like the ending because, you know, the Undertaker lost at Mania and I never support that. But, and here's my thing. And the, you and I talked about this before. Talk about going to fanboy hell on there's a Paul Riss going crazy. He was down. He low blowed my client. But uh, you and I talked about this, and it's like I'm gonna get a lot of hate tweets for this one. But you know, it was less impactful when Roman beat him, only because it had already been done. In my opinion, Brock should have never beat him at Mania. Roman should have. Yeah, I mean, I'll agree with that. Because what did Brock gain not by that? A, that's just that there was tapping right there. Tapping like a I drunk man. I only saw that on the screen, dude. I like, kind of like threw a fit. Like, man, that was BS! <laughs> <laughs> and then oh, right in the mommy-daddy buttons. The ding-ding! But I think, uh, I like how they <laughs> blur it on the replay, but live it was fine. <laughs> I um, know. <laughs> uh, no pixelation um, live. But yeah, I mean, it's like... If, if Roman beats him at WrestleMania, like, ends the streak, you know, Roman's sticking around for at least the foreseeable future. Yeah. Brock was already, at that point, a part-timer, so... Well, I've been talking about this with, you know, other friends, and I, I think I mentioned... I, I don't... I think I mentioned it to you. I know I did with Ramon. Freaking... I don't know, man. The way they've been booking uh, Roman... Late, I mean, right now... Like with him beating Bobby Lashley and everything, and going to SummerSlam, he needs to win. Otherwise, in the oh, there's Cody Rhodes' wife, Mrs. Nightmare. But anyway, <laughs> that's when he was going there's crazy. Mrs. Elfar, right there in the green dress. Yeah. No, 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 no. The winner, Brock. Lesnar. I was like baffled at this reaction right here because like they were like heavily pro Lesnar at this point right here. Yeah. And I'm like, uh, but then you match they were pro Undertaker, so No winner. Yeah, he goes on his spiel. I know, like the I, I like how the New York crowd was like, Hey, he got screwed, man. Boo the Undertaker. Cheer for Lesnar. <laughs> like who cares? Like, Undertaker won. Be happy. Now Brock can never get cheered. Yeah. I, but I, uh, but what I was saying I about... I mean, there, there's... I mean, I don't know. Remember WrestleMania? Like, people were crapping all over the match, but then when Brock beat him, the place erupted. Yeah. I, just, I, like, I, I think, was like, like... I think that was because they hate they were... Roman so much. I don't know. That was another, but but yeah, that's what I was gonna say though. If 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 Roman doesn't win at SummerSlam, here we go again with another replay. Um, in the words of Jim Cornette, he's gonna fall pl flatter than a plate full of piss. I mean, they have <laughs> they have booked him, in my opinion, fairly poorly for a while now. Like he, when he wins, it's not really consequential. But they keep throwing him against Lesnar, and he never gets the job done. So it's like, it's about freaking time, dude. This is number four. He needs to do it. Or, yeah, four. It's kind of like Misha Tate and Ronda Rousey. Yep. 
Why do you keep giving it to her? She can't beat her. Get over it. Yep. I want a rematch. No, you'll get one, and you'll win. Is Paul Heyman wearing two ties, or is just like that a two-tone tie? I think it was like the back of the back of the tie fell out. From, you know, from yeah. Yeah. Well, that ma- that's that match, ladies and gents. So, I uh, hope you enjoyed that. One of the best along. vacations I've ever had, by the way. Oh yeah, by day. far. I was in a lot of pain uh, at the end of it. But... Two weeks from now, I, I got a feeling we're going to top that. But you know, what is that? <laughs> I was saying. Uh, well, by the time this airs, you're already on vacation. But yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> this is our. This is, yeah. This is our warm up for SummerSlam by showing you two terrible matches and a fairly good one with a really screwy finish. So there you go. But yeah. So well, actually, this airs. I'm trying to figure out our air dates here. I'm sorry. No, this was this will air. You'll be home. Uh, already, because you're coming home, what, Wednesday after main, or after SummerSlam? Tuesday. I'm not going to go to SmackDown, so they're coming home on the Tuesday. Oh, you better not get uh, picked up by you-know-who, or he'll spoil <laughs> SmackDown Live for you. So, but, uh, yeah, so anyway, this was, uh, yeah, it was a great vacation, but you'll already be home. I'm, t- I'm trying to figure out schedules here, because I'm going on vacation, like, my vacation starts the weekend of SummerSlam. So, which is why we are doing watch-alongs, no news. Last week, obviously, Kyle and I did our preview for SummerSlam. And you will be, you and Ramon will be around, so I, you'll be on the podcast too. Obviously, this is all in retrospect now for all of you. Uh, pre-taped, there's a problem with pre-tapes here. <laughs> uh, next week will be me and Kyle giving our review of SummerSlam, and I know it's going to be a week after the event and whatnot, but we can cover all the fallout from SummerSlam, too, so we can jam-pack all that into one great episode. And this is uh, this episode is going to be spliced and diced together so that uh, you get a top ten list. Uh, there wasn't a top ten list last... Or, well, there probably was one last week. You and I Greg and I have to figure out the kinks of all this stuff, how uh, how the scheduling is going to go. Like I said, this is a problem with pre-taping. And uh, next week there will not be one, though, because it's just Kyle and I strictly. But uh, I don't know about you, man. Even though we watched two crappy matches and then this one, I had some fun on this podcast. Yeah, it was fun. It's a good... Uh, um, especially the terrible matches. I don't know why, but that's... Yeah. <laughs> Those are always fun to sit and laugh at and point and do the Nelson from uh, from uh, from the Simpsons. <laughs> oh, man. But anyway, yeah, so uh, I am not going to wrap up the uh, podcast yet because right after this, we are going to have a top 10 list coming at you as of recording this. I don't know what it is, so it's going to be a surprise to me too, boys and girls. So tune in for that. Yeah, it's going to be the top 10 things we can't wait to see in HCW. Shut up. Had to, had to jam that one in there. Mother of God. But, uh, yeah, so enjoy. We got jammy stuff in there. We didn't mention Nick and Midian, did we? Thank God, no. Oh, there it is. Yeah, there we go. Got a, got a Jimmy him in there. Good grief. <laughs> I didn't say that. You did. What? But all right. Coming, coming, coming. <laughs> We're moving on very, very quickly. Uh, well, actually, we're going to wrap up the podcast. It's been a lot of fun, had a good time, and uh, yeah. So anyway, thanks for joining me today, Greg. It was fun. And I will be bringing you a review of uh, NXT TakeOver Brooklyn 4 and SummerSlam next week with Kyle. It will be an all Troy and Kyle episode, bros. And then in a couple weeks, Greg and Ramon will be back. And they'll join us to let us all know about their experiences for the week in New York. Later, y'all. Later. This has been a Drama City production.